Happy Tuesday, Pod Piggies. Happy we are Tuesday. back. We are back and ready to go. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's get ready, Rumble. Ooh. Also, a very important note at the start of this. This is our, and if you know, you know. You know, you know. The ultimate episode. <laughs> that big long word that caused a lot of confusion a few seasons ago. It really did. Because mm. did you not just blurt it out? And yeah. Like, what the like, fuck what does that? that mean? Yeah. Anyway. I've got a big iPad if you're looking on the YouTube. So do you think I look a bit um, profesh? Because we get so triggered by the phones, by the way. We're going to have we're gonna have cue cards cue next, cards next season. season. For sure. Because we are aware that some if you watch, it does sometimes look... Like we're not interested. As if we're just looking at our phone. But, but we're not. We've got a very structured note on our phone mm-hmm. each week of what to talk about. So that is why we look yeah. there. We're not just, you know, scrolling TikTok. And do you think I look good in red, guys? Because... She does. I do. <laughs> My mother always told me that when I was younger and I used to be like, no, I hate red, but now I do think it complements my skin tone. My mum looks really good in red too. And you are similar. And also very. what's really lucky at, what did you say? I said very similar. I thought you meant, don't say that. It's like, that's nasty. <laughs> or that. <laughs> um, we actually brought the same outfit today. I know. But thankfully Jess the second option. She also brought this exact shirt. And the dark jeans. We would have. <laughs> and the black jeans. And we've got, got like trainers opposite on. trainers on. Anyway, so anyway, mud flowers of the week. We haven't had them for a couple of weeks. Well, we have, but we've just had mixed recording dates. But to me, they are beautiful, actually. They look like white roses, eucalyptus. I think there's a couple of white peonies in there. And we're not quite sure what the other. That's not flowers baby's are. breath, is it? No, it's not. Baby's breath. Interesting. Is that what that's called? Do we? I think it is. That's kind of giving me like a bride's bouquet. It's really beautiful. And can I just say, um, thought of the week was what a fantastic job a flower delivery man has or woman because when are you ever disappointed when you receive a big bunch of flowers they must have some right responses absolutely never by the way you're right <laughs> that's a really nice job to have so i was actually mopping my um shutter door bit and so my door was open and he came in he just lent in he goes jess and i was like oh my god they're beautiful and i thought i wonder how many people actually have that sort of reaction and it probably lifts their spirits as well. Yeah. And he was laughing at me like, oh, have a nice day. Fuck, oh, that oh, is you're nice. Cute. Anyway, yeah. this week's Spitter Swallow was actually a bit of a last minute addition to today's episode. Yeah. Because we just weren't going to have one because the time and we've just eaten whatever. Anyway, we passed Big Bear Bakery. Yep. In the West End in Partick. And we got a... Cherry Bakewell Almond Croissant. <laughs> it does look dynamite to be fair pass that up um but next season right you know how we like to support small businesses and initially this whole spit or swallow segment was meant to be to try foods that were a little bit controversial and we ended up doing it more where we support small businesses and of course we do love that so much mm. but if there's anything that you want us to try please send it to us anything viral but also if you have a small business please send it our way we will happily support you. Give a go then. That is nice. Is it? Mm-hmm. So he's been really good with her um, eating for a few weeks now, haven't you? Yeah, and all I want is a bar of dairy milk. Have it then. Last week's episode was, we thought it was great. We listened to it back a lot. Um, there was a few cuts made because as you can imagine, there's things that we share that we maybe didn't want to put out there into the world. But there was a lot I we know. kept in because... We felt like it would be quite relatable and help a lot of you guys. But thankfully, and we knew it would be, the feedback we've had from that episode has been probably the best we've had yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys love it, female and males. We showed a little bit more of a vulnerable side. It wasn't less of the producers were like, it was not very much of like more of a ha-ha episode like we usually do. But I think we like that from time to time, don't we? Yeah. I think it's just difficult. Like, see, when you listen back, it's so hard to not be like, (gasps) have I overshared? But that's kind of like how we feel every week like we just obviously want to make sure that we're not saying something that we shouldn't or whatever yeah but in conversations like that it's even more difficult because you're talking about other people yeah and even past experiences yeah they probably won't even know listen whatever but you just don't want to be too disrespectful or we're both in a relationship now of course so you don't want to overshare on your current or your past because because yeah. of that so we hope that we were open enough yeah, about experience. I think we were. I, I think we were um, and we'll try and keep it that way moving forward. Yeah, 
So we just want to read out a couple of messages that we've had from you guys. And bear in mind, this episode has only been out a couple of days, so I know it takes you a while to catch up. But already we've had this, the amount of views on the YouTube that we'd probably take for a week to get, wouldn't we? Yeah. It's been, it's been good. I think people are just wanting to see you Have a emotional. little tear. <laughs> <laughs> Love that for me. <laughs> anyway, um, we were actually debating cutting that out, but I thought, you know what, like... <laughs> It is what it is, isn't it? Well, I said to you, I think it's nice to keep that in. It's raw. And also, you weren't, like, breaking down in tears. You were just emotional about an emotional time. Yeah. That I think it would be different if you weren't out of that. Yeah, exactly. But because you can look back and reflect and whatever on There's it. There's nothing wrong with having a cry. We all should be sharing our emotions from time to time. Absolutely. So, love this episode so much. Also appreciate how raw and open the conversation between you both was. That can't have been easy to put that out for the world to hear. So thank you on behalf of your listeners, because that's going to help so many people. I love that. Needed to hear this episode. Needed in capitals. That's important. So much right now. I've been with my boyfriend for X amount of years this year and have been going through those exact, in capitals again, feelings you guys brought up this episode. I'm definitely going to try the midweek date night idea to bring us closer together and the note to get all my feelings out there. Thank you so much for sharing insights into your relationships and making me feel a little bit more normal about having a wobble. I love that. Mm. Today's episode, whoa, had me right in the feels and it's actually made me realise I'm going through a seven year blip at the moment with our 10 month old baby thrown into the mix. I need to make sure we do date nights and spend more time just us two. I feel like our world has done a whole 360 the past few years and I really needed to put us first even if it's once a fortnight. So I really needed to listen to this today. Thanks girlies. Stop. And this one's a nice one. I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for today's podcast. I was exactly where Jess was this time last year and didn't feel like I could talk to my friends about it. Thankfully, out the other side now, but it's oddly refreshing to know that all couples are go do go through the same thing. See? And then we had one from our loyal, lovely male listener. Well, we have a lot of male listeners, but one in particular we love. We enter that quite a lot. With and we're person. not going to share the name because you know but what a brilliant episode one of the best really interesting and insightful but as always bloody hilarious so good to hear relationships discussed at a relatable web level with the advice that you can use versus it being deep in psychological theory and therapist speak also good for it not being boy bashing <laughs> we love men we said we didn't do it and we didn't do it <laughs> we can touch on it but it won't go full pelt exactly but anyway thank you so much we yeah. love hearing all your feedback. Yeah. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside, I would say. It does, because when you have a viral video go out on Instagram, let me tell you some comments are, are very harsh. good for the old noggin. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. The past two videos you've put out, the back of five and the out with, and even the kilt one, wow. Do you know what I've noticed? Maybe not just TikTok, but I've noticed TikTok is definitely going down the route of... Um, like a bit how Facebook is like it's uh, there's a lot of older people on there that have really strong nasty opinions yeah and they voice it so vocally and they have their, their little cult of just trolls together mm -hmm. and it always seems to be the people that have like snapchat filter display pictures <laughs> you and you're that? never going to be able to really fully make them out <laughs> yeah and they just have like two followers I'm not talking like fake accounts I'm talking like it is really them yeah but it might have like a Rangers um, shirt as their DP and they're just talking really horrendous about us. And I just think, Jesus, get a life. Like what? I just think it says more about them than us. And I've told you before, these people saying these things are pleasuring themselves. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyway, I just find um, the open trolling on a viral video is so savage. People get angry about things that are that don't matter. It's just not that deep. It's also just their opinion. It doesn't matter. It's a lighthearted conversation. And there's a lot more to the conversation if you listen to the podcast. Yeah. That's not that one clip is not the whole episode. Anyway, moving on. This week we're going to speak more about the sexual side of relationships, but also covering a bit on marriage too. Yep. Because we put out the polls for last week's ep and we included marriage and some sexual bits we did so we'll dive right into that shall we so the first one was is getting married important to you we had yes I always wanted to not really fussed but wouldn't say no partner wants it more than me and not for me so we had 54% saying yes always wanted to interesting 
37%, not really fussed, but wouldn't say no. That's probably where I'm at. Yeah. 3% partner wants it more than me and 6% not for me. Interesting. Yeah. I just feel like a lot of people now are probably the not really fussed, but wouldn't say no. Yeah. Like it's not that you don't want to marry the person, it's just that you're not bothered about marriage in general. Mm Mm-hmm. And there was a couple of messages on response to that saying, I'm a little bit different to any of these um, answers. I've been married before and I'm divorced, but I probably would marry again or I don't see the point in marry again, marrying again. Yeah. Right. So we're going to read out a few messages from our listeners in each uh, segment of this episode because there was a lot. A listener's message on marriage. Love this question as it's always spoke about my friend group. None of us are married, but all in long term relationships. My four best friends think marriage is so important and really want it. Me, on the other hand, is not too bothered. I don't know why, maybe because I've spoke about it with my boyfriend and he's got the same thoughts as me. When you love each other as much as you do just now, why should you get married? It shouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Like, just because you're married shouldn't mean you love them even more than being in a long-term relationship. Your love for each other should always be unconditional and loyal whether you're married or not. One of my girls says she just wants to be married because the thought of being in your 80s and referring to your man as my boyfriend is quite icky, (laughs) which to be honest, yes, that's maybe true. So looking forward to this discussion on the pod. I call Richard my partner though a lot of the times. Yeah, you do do that actually. Check that's like came with age. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. He was my BF. (laughs) My man, my man. I don't know. Yeah, I would just still always say boyfriend. But I do think when you say it in a situation with like, someone you don't know at all mm. and you would say me and my boyfriend have been there because you wouldn't say their name because you don't know who that is I do sometimes feel a bit like what are your thoughts Zoe when someone gets engaged and they start referring to them as their fiance <laughs> I just don't know if I could say it I know same I but just then if don't you call them your boyfriend then it's like your friends would be like wait a minute you're engaged no I know I think just stick with what maybe we go up to partner at that stage yeah I just agree with this, right? Listen, I am in the same um, 37% of, I'm not really fussed, but I definitely wouldn't say no yeah. to marrying him, of course. But um, yeah, I just I just don't know what that would change for me and Richard. But people have said that when they get married, it just feels different. You, when, you, when you say out loud, that's my husband or that's my wife, it just feels different. And you have this sort of like really nice bond from the wedding day, the honeymoon, yeah. if you have all that. I think the issue is when people marry the wrong person or they've like committed to the marriage before it's even happened and then they still go through with it. Once that newlywed bubble's gone, people then don't work because without that sort of bubble of marriage around them, they yeah. actually realise that that's not real life to an extent. Yeah. Like once all that fun and games is gone, then a relationship should just be a relationship. Yeah. So unless you're kind of working already the way you should be to get married, you then maybe feel like it falls apart mm-hmm. a bit. But these 54% of that have always wanted to, that definitely will stem from them probably being a little girl. No, I know. Always seen their pe- parents as well being married. I might have looked up to them thinking, I want that love what my parents have got. Mm-hmm. See, I don't have that. So I don't know if that is the reason, but... I mean, it could it could stem from anything, but they might have loved romantic films and thought, I want that sort of love, or they want the whole wedding. It's just never been, I've never had that dream. Yeah, same. Like the little girl dream that we're no, talking about just now. I've not. But there might not even be a reason for that. I think it's just... It is what you like, what you like. I mean, see, to be honest, the thought of picking a fucking wedding dress is enough to put me off. I wouldn't know what the hell to wear. I'd want to put a suit on, I think. I'm <laughs> saying... <laughs> Right, we have another lovely message here. I split up from my husband around Christmas time after just getting married in October 2022 and buying a new house the following year. Lol, nightmare. And I was absolutely mortified because I was worried what people would think and because I'm 30. We were together for 10 years and he wasn't, isn't a bad guy whatsoever, but I just wasn't right for me in the end. I think we'd just grown apart. I fell out of love and couldn't see a way past it. At first, people were like, what the actual fuck? But to be honest, I'm five months on now. I'm back in my old room at my mum and dad's, which isn't ideal, but I honestly cannot remember the last time I was this content and happy, which people are noticing. I'm back at the gym. I've done a girl's trip. I'm going to somewhere with the family and have another girl's trip booked for somewhere in November. 
things I've always wanted to do but couldn't because of responsibilities, financial, etc. Now living with my, my absolute best life. My advice would be fuck what people think and do what's best for you and what makes you happy even if you think you're going to upset people, it's only short term. It's so cliche but you are only here once so you may as well make the most of it. I'm not interested in the slightest right now but from a future partner I just want them to enjoy living life and doing fun things, making memories and not taking things too seriously. Love the pod. I think that's a really nice message. Same. And I think that hopefully brings comfort to people too. Totally, because I'm at that age now where I've got friends going through this sort of same experience where they got married and they divorced really quick. Yeah. Uh, or they have been with their long-term, long-term partner who they've probably only ever been with and it's quite daunting to think what is life without them yeah. and they've split from them and they've got this whole new life and yes it's not easy but they are coming out of the other side now mm -hmm. and like she says you do only live once we spoke about settling in the last episode that if you're brave enough and I know it's it's easier said than done but you will always get through the other side absolutely even if you do have to move back in with your parents or somewhere then you will start getting back on your feet and finding your next path in life I mean people say a breakup to an extent is like grief yeah you're because, grieving your old life yeah and you're also grieving that person because to you the typical the typical way to break up with someone is to cut them out of your life yeah unless there's ties there that you can't avoid mm -hmm. so to you you almost act as if they are dead yeah do you know what I mean totally and like even though there's social media and all that now typically speaking you probably won't interact anymore or you'll delete them off it or whatever. So they're they're just gone. Yeah. So it is going to be a big adjustment. It's a big change and it will be hard whether you're the one that made the decision or not. Yeah. Very it's just interesting. like the change of it that's hard, I think, for yeah. people to cope with most. No, totally. Now let's move on a little bit to children and marriage. So a couple of people messages about marriage as well, but it also involved children or wanting to have children, which I think just puts... A bit of a different spin on it too. Yeah. So someone messaged us saying, not being able to have kids was a huge shock and took a long time to figure out what was next. After exploring adoption for two years, which was the most heartbreaking experience to discover that it was not right for us, mm. having to rewrite our future and get excited for a new chapter took us through so many lows and I almost lost all hope. If it wasn't for the fact that I married my best friend and we make the most solid team, I don't know if we could have survived the last four years Aww. we decided to make a huge leap of faith and start a new chapter in Dubai we move in a few months time and can't wait to have this adventure with my gorgeous husband I'm so proud of us life throws us obstacles when we least expect it and I react to things completely differently from a from other half but allowing time and space to heal as individuals and also as a couple has actually made us stronger than ever and I'm so grateful I get to do life with him communication and allow space Oh, that's a lovely message. It's obviously really upsetting their situation, but yeah. they're making the best of what they can. And I think that is a great move to Dubai. It's a great place with people that um, probably don't have children or a bit more of like an expat community. Yeah. And I think they'll thrive in that. Okay, so we asked for some advice from our listeners for keeping the relationship alive long term. So we actually had a message on our Patreon direct messages. This was This was nice. I wanted to sh share some relationship advice I've given to friends before, but only when they've asked. I've been in a relationship with my husband for 11 and a half years and I've been married for five. Number one, communicate openly about expectations you have for each other, especially when, if you live together. Even if you might think something is common knowledge slash sense, courtesy, always communicate whatever it is with your partner. Two, find hobbies and interests to share together, but also have your own hobbies and interests. You can enjoy without them which we both massively agree, don't we? Yeah. Three, it can be healthy to fight and argue, but only when you and your partner are able to learn and grow from the fight together. I like that one. And never sleep on it. Obviously, there is so much more that goes into having a healthy and happy relationship, but those are the three bits of advice I found myself giving to others when they've asked. That's, That's very nice. wise. Yes. I also like how they've said when they've asked. Yeah. Because I do think because you want advice and stuff from your friends you want to go to them but there's nothing worse than when you kind of turn unsolicited advice yeah or like <laughs> turn turn their opinion so badly that then it's just negative yeah. every time after that mm -hmm. which I feel as adults I've not really experienced luckily and I hope that I don't give that off either 
But I, I remember when you were younger going out with people and they would like do something and it was like, I hate them. I just hate them. And I mean, I would never say that to you now. Yeah. Even if I thought Richard could do things better, I wouldn't be like, I hate him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's a, that's probably why a lot of friends, by the way, um, are afraid to speak to their friends about their relationship because... Judgment. They don't want... Number one, and their family. They actually don't want their family or friends to think bad of their partner because they yeah. might be going through a blip. And there's maybe certain things said in a relationship that other people can't forgive. They're like, oh, remember that time when he said that to you though? I know. But you do always have those friends that remember the bad stuff all the time. And I think that can be quite toxic, I think, yeah. when you just want to And they have, want to remind you of it. Yeah. And all you want to do is just have a friend there just to give you some advice. Mm -hmm. Um but maybe that's why a lot of people find comfort in messaging us because we don't know them that deep. We'll never judge their partner. Yeah. But it is sad that some people feel like they can't talk to, you know, and they keep it with bottled up. Unless it was just all the time this person was just toxic and you're always falling out. There's only so much that your friend can take before they're like, come on. Like oh, you two are not made for one another. I know. Or, like it's just like the person that cries wolf. They'll always, you're, run, you're running to your friends for help and advice only when you're having a shit time. Yeah. And all, it's like the, the information falls on deaf ears. What we tell you, you're never going to listen to me anyway. So Why you it bothered? got to the point where I'm not bothered anymore. I know. And are you using me? I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gets like that. Another bit of advice, always protect a small piece of yourself and keep it safe just for you. Never rely solely on one person to provide your happiness. You should always be your number one priority. That is so true. You like will that. never find true happiness if, well, firstly, happiness is not a destination. It's a way of life. I like that. There we go. But you have to put yourself first. And if you're not happy within yourself to some extent, you'll never really find happiness tr truly with your partner because you're depending on that from them. Yeah. And I think that's when, like generally speaking, that's when relationships don't work. And that's why people say don't jump into something after you've just ended something either because there's no, the chance of you being happy after just ending something is mm. slim. So then you're going to just, fill that void with another person exactly yeah rebounding and then it just all comes crumbling down yeah i not know a lot always, of people that jump from relationship to relationship and i'm not saying it's a bad thing because it might just be uh right person right time or whatnot mm -hmm. but yeah i think that they haven't really grieved or um taken a step back about that past relationship and just thought this is why it didn't work or you yeah, actually reflect on what they liked didn't like mm -hmm. why it didn't work why it worked like all that sort of thing i think that's really yeah. important to do that yeah so quite a few people messaged us about couples therapy. And I think, again, going back to the age thing, I think if I was a bit younger, that would have never have been an option. And I think, think therapy is now quite widely spoken about in terms of just like individual therapy as well as couples therapy. Yeah. Um, I do know a lot of people that have been and have, there is nobody that has ever come away from therapy from what I know and haven't found it useful in some way. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to a good therapist, that is, I'd imagine. But... I do think that that doesn't ever mean that it's it's failed. I think it's just a way of openly speaking to somebody that um, is like a devil's advocate. Yeah, definitely. That will give you some advice and help. And I don't think it means you've failed in your relationship. I actually think it's really brave to do that. I was just going to say, like, how can anyone look at you trying to make something work or trying to better yourself or better your relationship, mm. whatever, as a negative? But there is a lot of, I'm going to say guys here because I've heard them, but they're like, oh, we don't need therapy. Oh, fuck that. I'm not going to go and speak to a stranger about. And I understand that's quite daunting. I get it. And I, I think I'd probably feel that way as well. I don't want to sit in a room with a stranger. But um, if you really struggle to communicate with your partner and you're constantly rowing, having somebody there to listen and keep it calm and you can just voice your frustration to somebody else whilst they're sat there listening mm -hmm. and the therapist is saying to them, right, you be quiet. That is a really good way of, is it like the mediocre of the room? Yeah, like they're stopping you from just hitting back with what you want to say. I also feel like it's important as well to think not everyone's been brought up the same either. Yeah. So you've maybe been allowed to speak that way to your parents or your siblings or whatever, or you've not, or like you had an upbringing where you witnessed a lot of that yeah. behaviour, so you think it's okay. So 
that's where therapy is helpful too i'd imagine for people mm -hmm. because it's not just that you two as a couple aren't getting along it's like no you two as people need help and how to handle situations in life not just with each other yeah um quick shout out for my mother i should kill Here me if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but my mum actually is a qualified therapist and she is wanting to specialize in couples that woman has been through an awful lot in her life and she's amazing at conversations and getting right in and about it she gets deep and i like that see i struggle with that because i'm obviously her daughter but having like a therapist as a mum or somebody that's into like psychology she has been since i was well, God, years and years and years but mm -hmm. um obviously she isn't able to give me therapy you can't give your family therapy yeah and i don't know anything about people she's given therapy to because of client confidentiality but what i do know is i've seen like reviews and messages of how much she's changed people's lives um, and just help them. So yeah, she's a really good person. If you are looking for someone, you don't even know where to start with couples therapy or yeah. even just therapy in general, by the way. Um, she's She can relate to an awful lot in her life. Um, she might be somebody, she's uh, at conversations with Polly on Instagram. So you can give her a little message. Good on her. And she, I won't know anything because she isn't allowed to say anything. She isn't allowed to no, say anything, even if she wants yeah, to. But, um, yeah, uh, she does Zoom calls, but if you are based in East Midlands, you could do face-to-face, -face, I think. But yeah, she'll be a fully um, qualified psychotherapist next year, but she's I think a level four therapist at the moment if people care about credentials. I don't know what it means. No idea, but I'm sure it is important. Yeah. Anyway, there you go, mother. she would like that. <laughs> she'll be buzzing. She will be buzzing. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the nitty gritty. The dirtiness. Yeah, go on the then. The naughtiness. Yep. The subject we all call S-E-X. Mm -mm -mm. Sex. Mm -hmm. In case anyone wasn't sure. Anyway, we're back to the stats. I hope people enjoy these stats because I do. I do. It's really interesting. No, it is. And I think it's important because, again, it just shows that... I was quite relieved by this one. <laughs> there's never a one... There's never like a, a one person... Yeah. There's, and we're just looking at our group of followers, listeners, whatever. So you widen that, it's only going to get wider mm -hmm. for each category, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got, we asked how often you have sex, and this is for people living together and in a relationship. Only because we're focusing on relationships and how to keep them yeah. working. But also if you're single, it's quite hard to gauge, like, are you just you dating someone and you're having mad sex all the time or are, are you, you just, just shagging? Just not, not interested. Like, yeah, exactly. It would make more sense of, you know, keeping the spark alive was kind of the topic. So that would For tend sure. to be like a long-term relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. So we had most days. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Which was 7%. Thank God. I was relieved when I saw that. I thought, oh God. Who can be arsed? <laughs> I can't be fucked. We're busy. Who can be busy. fucked? One to two times a week. I'm going to go with that once. <laughs> let's round it down. Fifty-one percent. That was that was over a thousand people, by the way. Good on you. One to two times a month was thirty percent, <laughs> and it's been a while was eleven percent, mm -hmm. and that was like nearly three hundred people. Yep. But one to two times a month was was still a higher number, six forty. I just think all these things, you need to take a lot of things into consideration, right? One being... Schedule. Schedule. People work away, people work different hours, people work different schedules. Whatever. I don't mean scheduling sex, by the way. <laughs> I mean just our Your life general schedule. life schedule, yeah. You're maybe nights out, they're not, you get home, they're sleeping, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There must be at least... Like shift patterns and things. Yeah, yeah. five days a month where you're not going to bed or in that sort of headspace together there's right? also five days a month where you're probably on your period if exactly that's, that's what i was going to say thing. as women if anyone's like me there's about 30 days a month that you've got a urine infection <laughs> <laughs> kidding on that's just not related to, i just can't even relate them anymore <laughs> um but then there's also things like holidays traveling like there's just so many different things so that if people but there's also let's take into consideration here that they may be having a bit of a, t a tough time with their partner. So it's not, it's been a while because 
The but lost that. That's what else I was going to say. If you're going through a blip that you feel, or even if you're not going through a blip, right, you have a stupid argument over something, there's one or two days gone. Yeah. Out of a week. And then you go away with your friends for a week, or then they do. Exactly. You're knack- knackered. <laughs> Guys, I'm knackered. Fat and shattered. Fat and shattered and knackered, and I, d- I look disgusting <laughs> in my fluffy pyjamas. I don't want to shag you right now. <laughs> like, we all feel the same, let's not lie. We do. No, I know. And we did say this, actually, Zoe. We forgot to ask this, but do you guys sleep naked? Because I listened to a podcast once that was initiating how to relight a spark in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And they said that sleep naked, like as a, uh, Richard does, but... Skin to skin. Skin to skin is actually a very um, intimate thing. And I think that does... And I do... Rem- I'll share this, but if I do, for some reason, have... Get hot or take my top off, because I do wear, like pajamas but not i'm not talking like a flipping onesie here but it just why not? a little bra top but if i do have my top off or whatnot richard is like hello <laughs> hello 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 my girl and it does feel nice it does yeah. feel nice when you're like spooning away but i think if i did that every single night i'd be at it like rabbits i'm sure i don't know maybe not but just and t- just tell us in dms do you sleep naked do you find that spice of your sex up a bit more or you yeah. pajamas girly Maybe your man's a pyjama boy. I've said it before. We love pyjamas. Yeah. Like, our, when we have done what we need to do for the day, it's pyjama time. Yeah. We I like to, love, like... I just like wearing pyjamas. Me too. We watch our, the telly in our pyjamas. Like, that's just... That's our chill clothes, essentially. Oh, so do you feel cold naked? Because I do. Baltic. Yeah. But I do get quite hot and bothered a lot at night, which I will take my top off sometimes. We. But... I wouldn't say it's that often, but I don't think I would ever get into bed. Top, it's more like a middle of the night, half sleeping, yeah. tops off. Then I wake up like, oh fuck, let the girls out during the night. <laughs> but I do definitely think that would spice things up. I think it would. Mm-hmm. It would for me anyway. Like, yeah. I do think it would. But I mean, the average, well, more than half was one to two times a week. That's great. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Good for fucking you. (laughs) (laughs) Who initiates it? Me, 10%. I'm guessing that was mostly women. That would make sense. 10%. Partner, 51%. (laughs) Horny men. Both of us, 39%. That's nice. That's nice, yeah. I would say um, I am between... Honestly, I am a mix between all three of them. Honestly, I am. So I would say I'm all three of them. Just no, dep- I would agree it, it with just you depends there. on my um, mood. I'm a horny pig when I'm on my period, but he won't. He didn't want to go there. I know a lot of people say that, and it's really unfortunate. It is, isn't it? It's shit, actually. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I would say I'm all three. No, same. I just think it depends on circumstances, and I also will come to this with a message that we had. But I think both is important. I think this started the. You asked a question, you were going to ask a question of, do you have sex sometimes to just tick a box? Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest here, a lot of women, I have an awful lot of friends, we've had this conversation where they'll say, oh, I just really can't be asked or I'm not up for it. And so many women fear that that's an issue or they worry that there's something wrong with them or they don't fancy their partner, but they do. It's just, they just, their libido is low. Mm -hmm. And honestly... I don't really have like a humongously high sex drive, but we all go through it. We all go through stages where we just really just are not up for it. It doesn't mean that we don't fancy our partner. Maybe mm-hmm. you d- maybe you don't, but I definitely do. I think there's quite a hard balance as well because a lot of people say to not leave it until you're getting into bed because by that point, one of you out of the two, if not the both of you, are probably shattered. But anyway, this goes on quite nicely to we were chatting about how did someone write it in or did we hear it somewhere about how foreplay starts in the day? Yeah. Which I'm a big advocate for this actually. Mm. I'm the same. I, I really can't I can't relate to this that much because um I feel like Richard does is is really great with all those things that we've written down. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna try and relate to somebody in a situation where their their partner doesn't give them much attention or compliments or But I think even if they do, it's quite important to maybe realise that 
that's kind of what's happening like the, that's maybe not the intent but it's quite a good thing if you feel you get that but don't give it then maybe you should yeah. maybe it'll kind of relight that yeah. flame because we it's were more saying of like men's expectations that a woman would have sex with them when it's like wait a minute you fucked me off all day yeah you've not cleaned the house or done whatever you were meant to do you've not said one nice thing to me you've not asked me how my day was i've cooked your dinner you're not you left your plate why the hell do you think i'm gonna then spread my legs for you mate you can fuck off absolutely it is true though zoe you know like well if you're in that mindset you don't feel versa, good man and woman, by the way yeah it let's just i'm just talking from our perspective here but that's what i mean like having arguments or your partner's behavior and day-to-day -day life will and can affect your sex life because if you're not feeling good about them or they're not doing anything for you to fancy them that day yeah obviously as a whole you fancy your partner because it's the main reason you've ended up together as <laughs> with initially fans each other yeah but you still need to fancy them day to day and like them whereas you go through days you don't like your partner because they're annoying you yeah and you know you're not gonna have then have sex with them well exactly i know i wouldn't that just wouldn't feel right for me no me too so what we were saying was foreplay isn't just the touching each other up it's like the compliments about flirting your behaviour towards each other, nice gestures, yeah, and just treating you yeah. well, like an all rounder, yeah. That all leads to then wanting to touch each other, wanting to kiss, and yeah, be like ooh, flirty, flirty. Have you seen that page on Instagram with the little chicks or no? Is it little chicks or ducks or something like that? And it's like um, it's just all these videos about this wee couple, yeah, but then obviously chicks say yeah. and it's like when when you're going to sleep so then one tries to fall asleep and then the other one's like hmm. so then that like say it's the guy puts the phone down yeah oh i've seen like, this hmm. light goes off hmm. something else and then they keep doing it until it's like they turn around the cuddle in <laughs> there's a jason showed me it last night there's a whole page on videos i fucking love it it's just really relatable isn't it because we're, yeah. we're all the same as women aren't we we are. See, I want to go to sleep with you, like cuddled into me, like not while you're yeah. on your phone. Get off your phone. Yeah, unless I'm shattered, I'm like you do what you want, am I? But when I put my phone down, it's like your battery's gone, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this leads us on nicely to makeup sex. What are your thoughts on having makeup sex? I feel like this is where the sort of like woman comes out in me. Yeah. Because I just don't necessarily agree. Obviously, it depends, circumstances, whatever, right? But I just feel like, yeah, it'll come, obviously, because it naturally will. But I just kind of rush into that on the night of also having the blazing row. Just feels off for me. Yeah. I think then you would naturally have a nicer day the next day when you're almost like, oh, that's us back in love. Like, we've got rid of that problem. And then you have, like, a nice... And then it would just naturally lead into that, whereas I just really don't like girls that... Again, we're talking women to men here, but I just don't like when they almost feel like that sort of gets them back in the good book. Yeah. And, like, gives the man what they want. I agree with you. Yeah, it's probably naturally going to happen because you've maybe got that sort of, like excitement passion of like yay we like each other again but i don't know that i like the term makeup sex yeah but then there is some women that really love it because they're getting a really good shag out of it <laughs> and it's pa and it's kind of that sort of like angry passion yeah. right we've got a funny uh <laughs> a funny question here two people wrote this in is a small dick a deal breaker <laughs> shouldn't laugh because you know poor sods i can't help it but <laughs> Um, can't help we've got a chode <laughs> chode um, hmm any personal experience or thoughts on that one <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> final answer for me personally yeah it was is <laughs> yeah shame real shame but like we say, it's a massive part of a relationship. And if it's just not there, <laughs> no pun intended, Physically, mentally, then I, it's really <laughs> difficult. Mm. Um, but we had a message from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> so I've met someone while I was travelling at the start of the year. Unexpectedly, we kept in touch and we met last met up last weekend the boy bloody flew five hours across australia to see me oh he is so perfect very handsome family man so funny but there's just a small issue his manhood is a little small 
and I know it's not all about, all about the sex and I wish I could look past it, but I'm not really sure what I should do. Help. Oh, that's a tough one. I think it's... I don't think overall you would say it's an issue, to, if you know what I mean, because it's like, well, if you don't really... If you personally don't really notice it in a situation yeah. or it's not actually tiny, you maybe yeah. just think it's a bit smaller or whatever. Yeah, but how but, small are we talking here? This is the thing, like... No, I know, like a micro penis. <laughs> I don't know. How can that physically go in a hole? I just don't want to be mean because I know it's like they can't help it and that's a real shame. It's not like, we get, like you know, like people have a flat chest, they can go and get a boob job. I know. I do feel it's really bad. Like, Can you get a, a willy job? Willy growth? Probably. Turkey. But I don't know. To answer her question, um, I feel like there's other ways that you can be in a relationship with someone. It doesn't always have to be like, Penis penetration. You could ha you could experience things differently. We well, that's that. what I was going to say. See if it doesn't affect your attraction to them. Yeah, that's a shame. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know it's quite a hard one, right? But see if you're still like, see if that happened. Then once you found that out, you were looking at them, and all you could think about was, "Fuck, he's got a small dick." Mm. That was too much swearing in one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Then there's your answer. No, you can't see past it. But even your nice words about this person, yeah. you're quite clearly still into them and attracted yeah. to them. So as you said, is there ways around it? Like, can you get yeah. a toy and just pretend it's the willy? Totally. Yeah, maybe you could reach that. That's an option. That. I mean, the guy's going to know he's got a small willy if it's small enough for you to... Yeah, if it's worry really about. you're making out, yeah. So... I wouldn't say end it just yet, honey. I would say if he if he's all he sounds like a really nice person, yeah. then definitely just keep trying. Personal ways. Hope that you wake up one day and it's bigger. Hey, listen, I love honey, there's some massive deal knows you can <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, we had a really good message here about the importance of keeping sex alive in a relationship. Um, from a female point of view. I think it's so important for both people to make an effort with sex. Being the only instigator and rejected on a regular basis. So this is a woman speaking here. Okay. Whether their reason is because they've got an early night get up, they are tired or simply not in the mood, it can be absolutely soul destroying when you are just trying to keep the physical love alive. I think sex is crucial to a loving, healthy relationship and can be so much more than just a physical act. Thank you for letting me say my piece. I love you guys and the real honesty on the podcast. I think that's very valid information. Hearing it from a female perspective of being the one that was rejected. Yeah. I mean, we don't hear that often because I suppose we're not really speaking to guys where they're saying, oh, my, my partner doesn't want to have sex with me or whatever. But it also makes you think about it from a guy's point of view as well because as we've said, typically speaking, the guy... Is the one initiates it more, is pushing for it more, is probably more up for it day to day. So it's like they will feel that too. Yeah, eventually, if it was constantly getting rejected, yeah. yeah. And it I think be very nice for your self esteem and also just thinking, like, what's the point? I know exactly. And I think that's actually important to keep in mind. Like, as a woman, if you feel that you maybe do the rejection quite a yeah. lot, then try and use some of our advice today to sort of spice it up and. Just give it a fucking good go. Give them a good ride. Ride your life. Mm. Right then, how to spice up the sex life. Spice it up, get it going. Keeping it alive. Do you know what I think just came into my mind? I think it's really important. You never know when the last time you're going to have sex is. <laughs> and I'll be at it all the time. Um, let's actually mention, like, let's say you do have a low libido, by the way. Because um, a lot of us women do. Maybe uh, Libido. Libido. It's quite an official word. Yeah, but it is what it is. Like your sex drive, then let's. Th there is way. There might be reasons as to why that is. By the way, so um, I believe you. It's worth getting your hormone balance checked. I think that's something that you can look into. Um, and what sort of things like alcohol can? I know the next day after alcohol, we're all up for it or at it. Meanwhile. Why is everyone up for it when they're like pure smelly and hungover? You're, you're sensitive. It's a thing. Yeah. You need, the you need like all validation you can get. <laughs> Sensitivity and neediness, I think. Um, contraceptive pill can be quite bad for lowering yes. your sex drive. Yeah. That's a common one. It is. Yeah. I mean, I've not been on it for years and I don't have a humongously high one, but I know it's helped for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah there's have a look, little look into it again we're not experts so we can't really speak on this but that aside let's just say there might be there might be a reason but to keep it alive things that i've done in the past or friends have done um more date nights so date nights dating one another have a nice intimate day like we said last episode weekly after that when you come home you're way more up for it then i also think that kind of takes you back to the stage where say you're living together now when you do a date night like that you should be doing them anyway right but that's what you used to do when you're first going with someone yeah. and that is probably when most people i know are sexually active with their partner is when you're first together because you sure. just want it all the time so that i feel like that kind of keeps it alive because you almost feel back to those times yeah and you've got that Giddy. like excitement again yeah and you've had a really nice night out together so you, you want to go home and like end it off Ooh. in a saucy way dressing up nice underwear i mean if dressing up in a full-on outfit is your thing then honey go for it nurse's outfit devil's outfit whatever i however would feel like a big twat <laughs> i would walk there's in just pissing no, myself yeah there's no way that i could do that seriously no i'd be like screwing in like <laughs> i would just baby feel, voice yeah used to go <laughs> i would just feel like i'm your child and i'm dressing up to be like oh i'm putting on a show for you <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I know you should be putting on a show, but it should be sexual. Yeah, I just couldn't. I I think I'd piss myself. Um, but I do definitely think if you've got a nice overnight, or even see if you've not got the financial benefits of going out on out on date nights a lot, make a cute dinner, stick a candle on the table. Yeah, like make a nice meal that you maybe wouldn't typically have during the week or whatever. Mm. Like that stick a nice movie on, candles around the house or whatever, and then tell them something naughty across the table. Exactly, a wee whisper. But the underwear thing for me is like, see if you want to spend 80 quid on a nice underwear set for me. Yeah. Feel free. they're expensive, aren't they? Exactly. You feel free. You do that. I'll put it on. Off in two seconds. Off. Pointless. That annoys me. So, buy crotchless. If you Keep want me to do that and for it to be beneficial, it can't have <laughs> pants in it. Keep them on, boy. I feel like shower sex is nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like shagging in the shower. Especially like if you're in a hotel or whatnot and you just get up in the morning. Just, listen, they're in the shower, just go in. You're getting them wash anyway. Invite yourself in. Join them. They're not going to say no. Well, they might. No guy. In the right mind. Well, there you go. No guy, I think, would be in the shower and not welcome you in with open arms. <laughs> They'll be saying, soak me up, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> soak me up, baby. Soak me up. That smell of raspberry <laughs> bubbles is gorgeous. Soak me up. <laughs> right. Introducing... What I will say is, by the way. Yeah. What I will say is, if you're having sex in the bath, be careful. Be careful. Because before you know it, that it. head is under. What head? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jessica. No. <laughs> <laughs> the head with the face. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Right, right. Right, introducing toys into a relationship. We put a little poll out there. Thoughts? It mm. can be a brave move for people. It can be. And it can be intimidating for a guy to, you know, for you to ask a guy to go, can I bring in a sex toy into our relationship? They'll be like, what do you need that for? Am I not good enough? I know, I think it definitely has a sort of, like... Bit of a manhood thing. Yeah, I feel like a lot of guys would definitely get the impression that then they're not really delivering on the... But that's actually not the, the case at all. Not at not all. Not for me anyway. I think, I think especially if people need something to spice up, that's a good avenue to go down. Yeah, but it anyway, feels brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> Try it. Honestly, and then just try try stick a wee something up his arsehole as well and see how he likes it. <laughs> oh, if you know, you know on that one. So yeah, something golden. Yeah. Other things that people have said, um, we've said, med mentioned this in our sex episode, episode episode in season two or three. People watch porn together. I have not done that, um, but I could imagine that probably is quite kinky for you. Like I make, I could imagine people get a bit of a kick out of that. Mm -hmm. um, get inspiration. Well, I don't know, maybe you, like, imagine if you watch porn, right, you would get turned on by that. So watching it with your partner, 
I think I would find that like watching a movie and you're watching somebody have the sex scene. I get embarrassed by it. I don't care who's in the room with me. I don't like watching two people have sex in a movie whilst I've got people sat next to me. Mm. Role play as well. Um, I could get in about that for sure. Speaking? No, but more of like a... Not like you've been a really naughty boy, like that. But, but, more, a sec. but more of a... <laughs> ew. But more of a like m masseuse role. Having a massage and, ooh, what's that in my back? <laughs> <laughs> what's that up my vagina? Because I do, you get in two in one then. You get in a massage and you get a shower. By the way, a massage is a very good tip for people yeah. needing a wee introduction to the yeah. sex show intercourse. I like that. It's like a little bit of role play, but it's not. Get you the just lie there and it. imagine it's a masseuse. Absolutely. Gorgeous. Well, someone did write into us to say, be honest about fantasies, a whole new level of spice for you both. But I don't know what my fantasy is. No, but you might not have Lesbian any. Lesbian porn? <laughs> then what? But you might not have any yourself or they might or you might not speak about it. So I feel like if you've got them, then let them know. Mm. Share them. The toy pole then? The toy pole. The toy pole. The toy pole. What did our listeners say? <laughs> right. So we asked, do you use sex toys with your partner? We've got for sure fifty three percent. Wow, that's a Good. lot more than I Fuck thought. On the lot, of you twenty four percent never, and twenty two percent open to it but don't know how to start. Right, very interesting one. We then asked if you do use toys, who initiated them? Mm -hmm. Me thirty three percent, my partner eighteen percent. I'm going to guess me's woman. My yeah, yeah, totally. Here, right, yeah. so that's very telling. Both 49%. Interesting. That is interesting, actually. It, it was definitely Richard in mine, I think. He suggested it. Yeah, he, he just bought them one day and I was like, oh. I actually remember that. I was like, okay, but I was all for it. I just think don't knock it until you try it. Yeah. I think if someone wants to do that sort of thing as well, like... As much as you would want them to respect you not wanting to do it, I yeah. think you almost need to have the respect as well that they want to try something. Yeah. And probably they're only doing it to make your experience better. But also, remember, when we talk about sex toys here, we're not always talking about a big vibrating dildo. There is so much out there. You've got those vibrating balls. You've got um, what are they called? Anal Clit beads. suckers, anal beads. You've got cock rings. Um Oh my god, there's loads. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really been on scrolled Love Honey for a while. But we need to get a nice Love Honey discount code, by the way, because we we shout them out an awful lot. That would be a good uh, a good ad. I'll add that to my fucking to do list. Somebody wrote in after the poll saying, "Every fucking time we joke, the toys are the third person in our marriage." And let's be honest; it's just not as fun without them. <laughs> there you go. Hey. If you're swithering, well, you go for it. That's you your go. answer. So, going off the kinks, we've had a really, really interesting conversation with somebody in our messages. And we've already thanked them so much for being really open with us. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be amazing. One of our lovely listeners said that she now swings with her husband. Okay. So... Message just saying, would you actually mind telling me a little bit more about this? Mm -hmm. I had so many questions. What made this conversation come up? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Do you get jealous? I need to know. I need to know everything. I think the big one for that is that people would wonder is, how did this conversation start? Who brought it up? <clears throat> we were playing a spicy quiz app on our phones. In the app, we could only see each other's answers if they were matched. One of the questions were, would you introduce another person to the bedroom? And we both answered yes. We were both surprised the other was up for it, as it was never been mentioned before. Initially, I know. Initially, I meant I'd like someone to watch us and play with themselves. But as conversation got deeper, we realised the thought of watching one another with someone else would turn us on, dot, 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 a lot. This right. actually made me flash back a little bit to Rich and the Strippers in Amsterdam and I find that well sexy. <laughs> we had watched the Open House series and signed up to the Swing Hub app. Swing Hub app, great for making sure everyone is genuine. No fake profiles. 
we started talking to a couple on there, which we was we really clicked with, arranged to meet them three months later. Drinks with potential to play, <laughs> if everyone felt okay. We got back to the hotel room, played sexy truth or dare card game and got started. When I see my husband lick the other woman's... See it. Pussy, it sent me <laughs> wild. No jealousy at all. Ooh. I was nervous I'd be jealous, but we had all agreed if anyone felt uncomfy, we would just say we wanted to stop. Communication is the only way this works. Communicate every thought or feeling, and if something crops up that we didn't like, we just talk it through and make sure it doesn't happen again. Before this, I would have thought seeing my husband touch another woman would have ruined me, but it's actually been the complete opposite. I suppose you know, never know till you try, eh? Um, so anyway, I obviously had to go in a bit deeper. We need more. How often do you bring someone else in? Right. And do you each go off with a different partner or are you having a threesome? Okay, yeah. We both have our own businesses and have three kids. So life only allows us to play two or three times a year. Right, okay, interesting. Quite often we meet the same couple. So we prefer to meet couples rather than just another woman. We fully swap husbands and play with the woman. By this I've learned I am bisexual at the age of 37. Good fucking on you, hen. My husband is straight, though, so he only plays with me and the other woman. Always in the same room. Fun. So they're having, like, a, a gangbang. Gangbang? Well, I don't know. What would you call that? So I, I said, this is iconic, and I'm really interested. How did you find the couple? Um, so they already answered that question in the app. And are you in an open relationship now, or are you just agreed to swing these few times a year? Right. And she put, we found them through the Swinger Hub app. It's like Tinder for swingers, I suppose. They have an Instagram page if you want to look at them. <laughs> no, we are not in an open relationship. We only play together in the same room a few times a year. I love talking to you about it, as none of my friends or family know. So I don't ever get a chance to speak about it ever. And by the way, I did ask her permission to speak about this yeah. podcast, and she was absolutely fine. We have played sober before quite often. We play via WhatsApp videos and pics with other couples. A few drinks is good too. Drunk sex is always more wild, isn't it? And yeah, she just then went off to say like a few other bits about the app and um, you can't screenshot it. It's all private, this app. Three strikes and you like get blocked from it. That's good. And there's a swingers club in Glasgow and one in Edinburgh. And I need to know what this is. Intrigued. That is really quite interesting. Yeah. So, um, Fantastic. Absolutely love that. And again, if that's your thing, if you f go for it. Like she says, don't knock it till you try it. The only thing is, though, it's risky, isn't it? Like, imagine one of you just, you well, tried it, then one of you just couldn't. Well, I said that to you. A friend of mine's parents, mm -hmm. years later, went back to the person they swang with when they were younger. Yeah. <laughs> or you just couldn't get over it, and it just felt like you couldn't get that image of seeing them with someone else out your head. Yeah. Because I remember being at school and I just always, you know, you hear those mad stories at school and it was people like, they had a threesome with their best pal and then they couldn't look at the best pal the same and I thought, no wonder. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Um, right, now we're just going to end with a few other messages that we've got. Wrap this episode up. A few random questions. So the first one. So my question was whether to keep following someone on Instagram who you used to date. I don't know if it makes too much of a statement if I remove him as a follower slash stop following him. Does it show that I care enough to do that? I don't want to give that impression. There's also a part of me that wants to see him doing well and show what he's missed out on, but that's toxic, I know. And does he even care? Probably not. Thoughts? So is she seeing someone else now or not? She's not mentioned that, but I think the issue here is, right, you've been dating someone enough for you to think about it, right? And you've still got them in social media. Is removing them just like you look as if you care? You don't yeah. want to see what they're up to because it affects you. But do you still want to have them? Because equally, you're also not interested in the life yeah. anymore. And is it then awkward when you do both have a new partner? It's a weird one because I suppose I can't really relate to that because I've been with Rich so long that Instagram really wasn't a thing before I know. him. So... I mean, if I split from Rich now, then yeah, I would remove him because that would be, it's a lot deeper than that. Do you know what I mean? And it'd be hurtful to still see. I think if you've had feelings involved and you were upset that something ended, uh, as much as it's quite deep, I think you should remove them because I think that constant reminder is then going to be hard for you or to you over could the mute situation. Them. Yeah. You could mute their stories and posts. But just stop them from be being able to come up. But equally, I do know what people mean about, does that, look as if I care I think it looks like you care more if you unfollow them 
and all that. That's what I mean. Well, I don't know, actually, two two ways. You could be like, they might be thinking, oh, she didn't give a fuck about me, she didn't follow me. I don't actually really think I follow anyone that I've been involved with in the past. No, I don't know if I do either. But again, a few were kind of like, before like the time of it really being that big a thing, or I also feel like when I got into like an ex-relationship, in that age that I was in, I was kind of like, get rid of all the past. Yeah, maybe. There is definitely people on my Instagram, though, that I've, like, been with before, but not, like, dated. Like, no, I know, same. I mean? Like, a uh-huh, like thing you've maybe had you know? a bit of a fling with or something yeah. like that. But I think maybe, like, proper scene kind of situationship, relationship level. I guess it depends how it ends, isn't it? I know. If it ended, like, amicably, then there's no reason why you should just mute him. But if it was, like, a real toxic ending and you still like him and he left you, then I would probably just unfollow him for your own... From Sanity. this message, I get the impression that she's maybe still slightly interested because she said, "Yeah, show what, show him what he's missed out on." Yeah, yeah, okay. You've still got a bit of interest there. You care, yeah, about what he sees, thinks, and feels. I agree. So my advice to you would be remove him. Yeah, because you're hanging on to that and you want to move on. Yeah, totally. Whereas if you don't care, keep him there. It's nice to be nice. I was single all the way up until I was 33. This is a nice message, by the way. I've been with my boyfriend now for nearly a year and I'm so happy. I wish I'd stopped worrying in my 20s about meeting someone and if it was all going to work out. If anyone is in the same situation as I was, please just relax and enjoy being free and single. Go on your holidays with your pals, go on fun dates and make sure you have stories to tell later on when your life is quieter. Everything will fall into place. That's gorgeous. Couldn't agree more. I Wish mean, you get that printed and stuck to a wall. Yeah. That's really nice. Right, next. Me and my current boyfriend went to uni together in 2016. I was 18 and had another boyfriend at the time. Yeah. We'd done different courses, but some of our lectures were the same. He was one of the few little boys in the lecture hall and I said to my friends, oh my God, who is he? <laughs> she needed to know. Couldn't stop staring at him. I remember having a feeling that I was so sad I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. My friend is, had told me it was her friend's ex-boyfriend. I don't think she told me his name. Anyway, three years later, we were in our last year of uni and I had never seen him since that year. I had became single a few months before and I said to my other friends, remember that boy from our lecture I used to fancy? Why do we never see him anymore? I went home that night and downloaded Tinder as I had been let down with people previously and he was the first person who came up. I was screaming and I immediately matched with him and the rest is history. We've been together five and a half years. Oh, that's our besties. Lovely. That is lovely. And that is what you call fate. And Absolutely. What's for you will not go by you, sisters. We wanted to read this one out because... We asked her permission again if we could read this out and she she said absolutely yes because she feels like there'll be other girls or people in the situation that can absolutely relate. Yeah. Uh, it's more about second chances and cheating. Um, so, hi girls. Love today's episode and it really struck a chord with me. I had a wee greet in the car on the way home and everything and I don't know why but something's telling me to share my story with you so grab a cuppa. So I've always been a bit black and white when it comes to cheating. If that had happened to me, I'd be a goner. The disrespect and not being able to forget, bringing it up after a drink and all that. Very, very true to me. That rings very, very true to me. And then it happened. When I tell you I had no idea and the, my whole world was freaking shook. We had been married for 10 years in December and together for 12. A bloody beautiful marriage as well. Great sex, good job, no arguments and the best of times and this dumb ass motherfucker in brackets, sorry, (laughs) downloaded Tinder. (laughs) He used someone else's photos, got chatting to a girl over four days and then ghosted her. By this time, he'd added her on Snapchat, in brackets, ick, what the fuck does a 35-year-old man need with Snap? (laughs) (laughs) And she then knew his identity. I don't know if she was pissed at being ghosted or being a real girl's girl, but she found me on Instagram and told me. This was in August last year, and honestly, I'm not okay most of the time. I was so black and white and now it's all very, very grey. I love this man, our life and everything we have built, but he has fallen arse over tit off the pedestal I had with him. He fessed up straight away, he owned it and sent himself to therapy, where he's been going weekly ever since. He has a history of being reckless, impulsive stuff, usually money related, but has always landed on his feet and I think this is the first time the consequences of his actions have truly been bit bit him in the arse. I take some, in brackets, question mark, 
comfort that he has realized what he's doing and cut it all off after a few days but I don't know if it if I'm naive to think it's the only time he's done it I guess I'll never know and if I'm saying I need to take him at face value until he gives me a reason not to trust him until you don't yep I meant my marriage vows and for me marriage is wise if it's not him it's not anyone so here I am. Some days I'm doing okay and others not so much. He is trying and I know this, but I look at him differently now. And as I said, it's such a grey area and I don't know what the future holds. I'm trying to be more independent, which I've, the, which I've never really see, been great at because I've been with him since I was 21. And prepare for the worst, hoping the best, but who knows. If you have any advice, I'll welcome it, but just wanted to share my experience of where I truly never ever thought I'd be in this position and that if it was to happen, I'd be a bad bitch who would wash that man right away out of her hair, but yet here I am. Same with the man who's disrespected me in the worst way and feeling weak as fuck, like I'm letting myself down by doing so, but feeling loyal to my vows and the promise I made in front of all of his friends and family. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk and keep on smashing it. Oh, so that's a hard one. I genuinely feel that you should absolutely not feel like you're letting yourself down because like you say, you did these vows yeah. and you stick by them. And I think we've said before on a podcast, I do genuinely believe in second chances. Mm -hmm. I would, however, agree with you in the sense that I would probably feel naive enough in the fact that is this his only thing he's done because that's quite a, like going on Tinder and... It's quite a random act to just do once and then that one time so unluckily get caught. It was like he was so... He wanted to crave this sort of attention mm -hmm. or wanted maybe a secret little affair, then did it by a false identity, shat himself, ghosted this woman, realised maybe he was making a mistake yeah. and didn't get away with it. But he took himself to therapy, which a lot of men wouldn't. He's got a history of being reckless and like she says, this is the only time where she thinks he's not fell on his feet. He's been caught out. She, mm -hmm. He's thinking, I'm going to lose the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. I do strongly believe in second chances. And I believe that he can come away from this, especially if he sounds like he's got underlying issues. Yeah. I think second chances are a good thing to give when the person who needs the second chance realises what they've done. Yeah. And it's taken action. Like... A lot of guys in his position would not have took themselves to therapy over no. there. And they just wouldn't have, they would have just thought an apology would be enough. I've not actually physically done anything, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's still cheating. And also, I think, as she said, he does realise what the consequences of this could be. But my advice, I think if it was me and I was feeling the way she is right now, would be to just give it time. Yeah. And I know she said she can't really look at him the same, but that might change if his actions keep changing for the exactly. positive. But I think if you get to a certain stage and it's just never going to be something you go over, it might you might need to look at it differently. Yeah, totally. I think you, it is possible to work through something like this. Yeah. Um, especially if there was, as you not aware, but there was no physical cheating as what, as what you're aware of, which maybe softens the blow slightly, but... Um, Either way, there is some women out there and that's honestly fair enough. They could never forgive and that's just their decision. But if if this is a decision you've done and what you believe is right, then that is the right decision. Don't yeah. feel like you're letting yourself down just because other people feel differently. That's what you want to do and put your trust in that decision. But if he does it again, then definitely wipe the flipping floor with him. <laughs> Get him to fuck. Yeah. Right, well, I think that's us covered all bases of relationships. Woo, there's a lot to unpack. I know. Um, if we were having this chat earlier over coffee, but we were quite intrigued in if you've found out somebody's having an affair, like how have you found out? If you've been cheated on, have you sat and digested this information and come back with a big like revenge? and, Or have you, your head's gone and you've straight away messaged and rang them? Like, I really like hold my hands up to these women that can really watch something go on for a, a week so if they know someone's mm -hmm. having an affair and then get all their information and then boom yeah I couldn't I'm a hothead mm, I think I could do that what weeks maybe not weeks but I would always approach the situation calmly would you yeah oh no I'd be I'd be a very like blower. I've just to let you know I've just found out yeah that this has happened and I'm just letting you know that I'm just about to pack my bags and I'll be away and you'll never see me again and I'll put the keys to the letterbox and that's us over 
So have a nice life. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> I could definitely hold that together. Yeah. Obviously, inside, I'd be like, Rah! Yeah, totally. But I would like to know... I would like to think I could act like that, but my emotions would be gone with me. De mm. Again, depends on the situation. I know, exactly. But what I would like to know is, if you have found out that your partner's cheating, have you messaged or contacted the other cheaty? Yeah, if they've got a partner. Or told their partner that they were being cheated on? With your partner, do you get? But I mean? are you having an affair and you've been caught? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us. It, we won't tell anyone. It's yeah. anonymous, and just tell us like any mad revenge shit you've done, even if it's maybe not as deep as an affair, yeah. or it can be a past boyfriend story. Yeah, something that crazy that you've done just yeah. to get some revenge. Because we've got some, gr I've got some great ones from my friends that they've done. But we're going to save this for series five. Five. Can you believe it? Yeah. Five. So message it. You've got you've got a, f a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, that was lovely. That was great. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and again found it helpful. An extra long one for you before we leave you for good. We're coming back. I'm only joking. Right, well, we'll see you on Friday. If we see you on Friday, and if not, we'll see you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Bye! Bye.